I'm Jen. Welcome to Life Springs Online. We are so happy you chose to worship with us today. If you could please help us by sharing this broadcast. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. Before we get into the online service today, let's talk about the different in-person service options at Life Springs Church. Let's start with the Western Harnett campus. We meet every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at Western Harnett High School. At the Stanley campus, we have two services on Thursday nights at 6.30 and 7.30 p.m., Saturdays at 6 p.m. for young adults ages 18 to 25, and also Sunday mornings at 9, 10, and 11 a.m. Hey, if you have kids, go ahead and get them ready by heading over to lifesprings.online for a virtual kids service right on the homepage. We want to make sure they grow spiritually too. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you share this broadcast. The more you share, the more people have the chance to hear about God's love. We want to get connected with you, and we have made it easier than ever before. So if you will, go ahead and take out your phone and get ready to text. If this is your first time, please take a moment and text the word GUEST to the number beside me so that we can connect with you and give you a free gift. Today, we are introducing a new way to stay informed about everything going on at Life Springs Church. We call it Getting the 411. All of the announcements from today will be available if you simply text 411 to the number beside me. If you would like to dive deeper into God's Word, check out The Table. It's an excellent devotion with a monthly theme to help you know where to read and to grow. Text 411 to the number beside me. This week begins Passion Week as we prepare our community for Easter. There are a lot of ways you can serve and we need you to sign up to get involved. For a list of the projects and to sign up, text 411 to this number. Speaking of Easter, we have new service times beginning April 1st. Our new service times will be Thursdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays 9 a.m., 10.15 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. for the Sandley campus, while the Western Harnett campus meets at 10.30 a.m. Mark your calendars and be sure to invite someone to one of our Easter services. If you want to, a simple reminder before next week, text you guessed it 411. There will also be a sunrise service on Easter, April 4th at 6.30 a.m. at the Stanley campus. Come check out the sunrise as we celebrate the sun that has risen. Also, there will be breakfast provided that day for those who attend. You don't want to miss it. For a reminder, what do you think you can text? 411. One more thing happening on Easter Sunday, if we are doing signups for the next semester of small group as we dive into the book of Ephesians, mark your calendars for April 4th. And if you forget the date, simply check out 411. There is so much going on at Life Springs Church, and we encourage you to get involved. For a reminder of any of, the, any of these announcements or more for real, text 411 to the number below. Now, here's Pastor Shane with some more information on giving. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and thank you so much for your generosity. Because you give, we're able to make a difference in Lee County, Harnett County, and beyond. I hope you guys are enjoying this series on Catfish Christians. I know for me, it's reminded me that years ago when I made a commitment to Christ, the enemy catfished me by saying, you can't afford to give. But God reminded me, I can't afford not to give. What a blessing it is to give. It's better to give than to receive. So I encourage you to, to do the same thing, to give. If this is your church home, hey, we encourage you to do that. If it's, if it's not, you're still trying to figure it out, hey, we encourage you not to give. So right now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray with you. Let's pray. Father, we praise you. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for this series on Catfish Christians. And I pray, God, right now that if someone's being catfished by the enemy, by him telling them that they can't give because of X, Y, or Z, I pray, God, that you would remind them what a blessing it is to give. I pray blessings over those who have to give and those that don't. We love you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to give, you can go to lifesprings.online backslash giving. Hope to see you soon. That's all for this week. If you need to catch up on any of the announcements today, text 411. And if this is your first time, don't forget to text GUEST so that we can give you a free gift before you leave today. And we'll see you soon.
God did for you. Can I give you a hear you right now? Come on, anybody thanking God in here right now? Hallelujah. I love this song. Who likes this song? Hold your hand up. If that don't light your fire, your wood's wet. That's all I can tell you. I don't, I don't know because I'm telling you, my Savior, he went right into the enemy's camp and he snatched me from the clutches of Satan and he wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and he cleaned me up and he lifted me high from a miry pit I was falling in and I'm a new man because of Jesus Christ. And if you've not had that experience, you're at the right place because God wants to do that in your life right now. I got a message for you to talk just about that, but I want you to bow your head and close your eyes and pray with me for a minute. Would you lift your hands to heaven right now and say, God, I, I'm here because I want to connect with you. I want you to change me. I want you to do a work in my heart and my life. I want to be like you. Use me for your glory. Let me get the message. Let me get the message. We're going to do communion and don't leave. Don't, don't run away. Cause, and, if, and if you're watching online right now at home, I want you to go ahead and get your, maybe you should pause it or whatever and get you some communion elements ready so you and your family can do communion at home. I want you to be able to participate. But listen, I want you to know something. You don't have to be a member of Life Spring Church. It's not our table. It's the Lord's table. Just say, God, tonight, this, this, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you're watching this, say, Lord, use this in my life to turn me around and get me on the right path. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. amen, amen, amen. Can you give God a hand clap of praise right now? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can have a seat. And look, as you're seated, if you made any commitments to Jesus Christ, I want you to text this number. Just text prayer right now to 919-586-8900. I want you to text prayer. I want to pray specifically for you and what's going on in your life. I want to say hello to all those that are in this auditorium. I want to say hello to those that might be watching online and those in the lounge and those in the party room. Some of you are watching this on a, uh, on a, on a nighttime, some on a morning time, some during Sunday morning services. Whenever you're watching this, I want you to know God is in the room with you, that he never goes to bed. We get mail. We get emails sometimes from wee hours in the morning. God is up even in the middle of the night and he loves you. Come on, would y'all do me a favor and welcome our church family, no matter where they're tuning in from. Get a little loud right now. We're glad you're here. Thank you so much for being a part of this day, and thank you for being a part of this. And today, I want you to follow along with this sermon. If you'd like to follow along with the sermon, just text sermon to say the number with me, one, two, three, 919-586-8900. Just text sermon to that, and you'll get the notes to follow along today. Um, and as you're doing that, and as you get ready, uh, let, me just, let me just tell you, I don't know if y'all have heard about it, but next weekend is a big weekend for the church world. Have y'all ever heard of it? It's a little holiday called, anybody know what it's called? It's called... Easter and Life Spring Church is not asleep at Easter. Can I hear an amen? Right? We are going to be we're like if you don't you don't have any excuse if you're now if you're not coming because of COVID I get that but if you're not coming because of your schedule you need to check out uh, you need to check out the four one one go to Life Springs Auto Line check out the four one one and all the times we got all the worship opportunities we've got available it is unbelievable you have no excuse not to be able to worship on Easter now how many of you know one person at least who is not in church. Maybe don't have a great relationship with God, but you're not sure about that relationship with God. You're not judging them. You just don't know. And you just you would love to see them get more connected to God in, in a church. Hold your hands up good and high. Anybody know anybody like that? Hold your hands up good and high. The day when you leave, um, we took tithe money from single moms. We took God's money to take and buy you some things so that you could invite people to church. Because how many of you want your life to matter? Hold your hand up good and high. How many of you like to know one person's in heaven because of you? Hold, right? And see, a lot of you is not really comfortable sharing the gospel, but here's what you can do. I'll share the gospel if you will bring, or we'll share the gospel, our preaching team, if you will bring them to church. And even those of you watching online, you have no excuse. We got digital ways to do this and all. Life Springs Online. We want to, more people will come on Easter than any other time, right? They're, they're, they're people are open to the gospel at Easter, so let's take advantage of that. So we're going to give you a little bag of things you can do. We're going to give you a, a guide on how to use these, and we're starting a brand new series next weekend called It Ain't Over. Come on, somebody. It Ain't Over. The tagline says down but not out. 
And that's exactly where some of you are right now. You're down, but you're not out. It ain't over till God says it's over. And so I want you to invite somebody. We got a prayer guide. We got all this. Now, here's the deal. I'm, we're going to give you one of these. And, and we got to, um, actually, we're going to have a prayer service here on Sunday, uh, the Sunday before Easter. So make sure you're here. But if you can't, we got the places we're going to go pray. We're going to drive and get, a, get your group together and go do a, a caravan and get some people together and go do a drive through prayer. We're going to be praying all over this city on the Sunday before Easter. Isn't that incredible? It's, hey, so, so we, if you can't make it here, at least maybe during that week, you can show up and pray at those places and pray for God to do a miracle uh, during those times. Now, here's the deal. Um, we have people in our church that work for the Sanford Police Department, the Lee County Sheriff's Department, the Moore County Sheriff's Department, the Raleigh. If I find these in the parking lot, I'm getting them fingerprinted. We're coming after you. You understand what I'm saying, right? Y'all, y'all, come on. Y'all got it. If you got it, say got it. I need these. I need, listen, the seed don't do any good unless it gets in the ground. And I need you to help me get it in the ground. Can I hear an amen, right? How many of you would take and try to give us something away? You try to invite somebody to church. Hold your hand up. Think of a person who you think would never be in church. That's who I want you to give it to, all right? I want the worst of the worst of the worst. I want, I want to make sure we have the house full of people who need a good news. That's what I want. People who need good news. So we're going to wind up this series today, and so I'm so glad you're here. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you picked a great way to come to church. We've been in a series called Ready, One, Two, Three, called Catfished Christians, and we're talking about knowing you're really saved, and these are all on demand. These are buildings, so if you're coming in right now, you may feel like you're coming in a little bit like the last part of a movie, and I get that, but hang with me. I think you understand it, but I think you get more out of it if you were to listen to all the messages, and so I encourage you to do that because these do kind of build. These are in order. They're not just random messages. We've been building the case, and I don't have time to go through a lot of that because we're going to do communion, and we're going to have a great end of the day service and a great punctuation to this. I got so much I want to tell you this week, but I just don't have time. So go back and listen and, and listen to them on review, um, on demand. But here's the bottom line. What we've been telling you, just real quick to review, because you got to know this, what we've been talking about is that the Christian life is, is, to be live, is a life that is lived in faith, Contrary or instead of works. Every other religion says you got to do something to be saved. Christianity says you have to believe in something. Say believe in. Amen. Last week's message, you have to have a faith that believes in something. And then, not only that, we live with repentance instead of rebellion. So, so in other words, we don't live like saying, I can just do my, anything I want to do and I don't care what God says. No, no, no. We live with this idea of repenting, that repentance is a picture of I'm going down a road, I'm going the wrong way, so I turn and go in a completely different direction directions. Now, um, that's, that's what we've been talking about. Today, I want to talk to you about this whole thing of repentance. Say repentance. And each week, I've been giving you these statements I want you to read over yourself. Just curious, how many of you remember some of them? Hold your hands up. You've done it. They just read them one time, right? You read them because faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. I want you to hear yourself say it because the devil has filled so many of you full of lies. And I want to, how do, what's the antidote to lies? The truth, right? I want to give you the truth. And so I want you to read them over yourself, over and over. Here's the one for this week. I want you to read it with me. One, two, three. Today, I choose to follow Jesus. Ready? One, two, three. Today, I choose to follow Come on, a little louder. Today, I choose to follow Jesus. Today, we're talking about repentance. One of my favorite parts, I've been in ministry now for uh, around 30 years. Can you believe that? I started preaching whenever I was three years old. And, um, okay, maybe not three years old. But I did start preaching when I was very young, and I've been preaching for about 30 years. And one of my favorite parts of preaching, one of my favorite parts of being a pastor is watching people say, uh, get saved and their whole lives change. Now, I'll resist the urge, but I'm looking right now at the audience. I remember when several of you, I know where you came from. I know who you were before Christ. And I watched you, whether it was kneeling at an altar, some of you 30 years ago kneeled at an altar and came to an altar. And some of you just prayed with me, hands on. Some of you prayed with somebody else. But I watched you come in, and I watched you get the word, and I watched your life change. Anybody ever seen anybody do that? It's a powerful thing. Powerful thing. Now, that's the most encouraging, most exciting, best thing I love about being a pastor. You ever tell you the most discouraging thing about being a pastor? Somebody say funerals. Nope. Because funerals for a saint can be a great thing, right? Yeah. You, some of you say church conflict. Well, that can be aggravating, but you can usually jack somebody's jaws. And you, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We don't do that. We don't do that for those watching online. The most discouraging thing for a pastor, for me anyway, is preaching the gospel, people hearing the gospel, and never applying the gospel. Never changing. Never allowing the gospel to get into their heart. It's very discouraging. Y'all understand? Can y'all understand that? Can I hear an amen, right? 
It's very discouraging. Not for me. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to heaven. I, I'm trying my best to live it. But for them, because they can live so much better. They don't have to keep repeating the patterns in their family dysfunction. They don't have to keep going back into that same old place. They don't have to keep doing the same old things. They don't have to get, you know, the old saying, there's no, second, there's no education in the second kick of the mule, right? They don't have to get kicked two times. They don't have to keep getting kicked over and over and over and over again. So um, what I want to talk about is this recognition. When you recognize Jesus is Lord, then what should follow is repentance. And without repentance, there can be no reconciliation with God. There's, repentance is not an additional thing. It's not like faith uh, it, it, and in repentance, it's the same thing. You really can't believe that Jesus is the only one, the King of kings and Lord of lords, without your life changing. Does that make sense to you? It's the same coin. It's the two sides of the same coin. And so you can't, you can't pick up just one side of a coin. You pick up the coin, and it's both sides. So when you pick up the belief, I believe in Jesus, I'm just not going to change my lifestyle, there's no category for that in the Bible. You have to, when you believe in Jesus, your life has to change. Can I hear an amen, right? So, so there has to, so basically, repentance is belief in action. Here's what repentance means. Repentance means to a change of mind, a new, a new mind. In other words, you get this new mind. You make a decision. You realize your mind changes about Jesus, that he's not merely just a person. He's not just about checking a box. And, but you know he's the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he died for you on a cross. And because your mind changes about Jesus, then your actions have to change as well. And changing your actions because you have changed your mind. And now you submit to his authority. Who understands so far? Hold your hands up. You now, what I want to do, just like I did last week, I wanted to dive deep in that whole believe in thing. I want to dive deep today in repentance. So I'm just going to give you bullets. I could give you a lot more. I'm, this is not an exhaustive list. I just want to kind of clear up some of the misnomers of what you think forgiveness is. And I want to paint you a biblical picture of what repentance is. Because I don't want you to think that being a Christian means just believing certain things. It's, it's, it's not only believing certain things, but it's when that belief works its way into what you're actually doing doing. Are y'all tracking, right? So, so here we go. These are just random statements I'm going to give you. Then we're going to do communion. Repentance is more than apologizing. Now see, a lot of people think repentance is nothing more than just saying, I'm sorry. And, and it's, a, it's, not, it's, it's a prayer that you pray where you acknowledge your sinfulness and you ask God for forgiveness. Now that is a great place to start, but I want you to understand Forget, repentance is more than walking an aisle. Repentance is more than praying a prayer. Repentance is more than baptism, although baptism is a part of being a Christian. Repentance is more than a public testimony that, hey, I used to be a sinner. And I've, that's not, that's not, repentance is more than raising a hand. Repentance is more than saying something with your mouth. Repentance is more than going somewhere with your feet. In fact, Jesus, quoting the prophet Isaiah, said this. He said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Repentance is not a motion of the tongue and the hands as much as it is a motion of the heart. Repentance is a change of the heart where you abandon the position you've had of rebellion and you adopt a new position of submission to Christ. If you got it, say got it. You get repentance number two. Repentance is more than feeling guilty. Some people think, oh, I'm really, I'm telling you, boy, he really repented. He cried and cried. And cried. I remember the, 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 um, me and my buddy, we were kind of hellions. I ain't going to lie about it. Whenever I really got serious about my faith in Jesus Christ, we were at a summer camp, and we had been in trouble that week, and we'd done some things we shouldn't have done, and um, we both walked an altar that evening. And my buddy, he, um, he, he went down, and me and him both decided to give our life to Christ at that altar, and he snotted and slobbered and snorted and cried and everything. He, he just he, he had a lot of tears, and it was, it, was, it was really, very emotional. I didn't. I just knelt down, and I prayed a prayer. And anybody who knows me well knows I don't cry very easily. That's just, uh, I don't. I, the older I get, the more I cry. But when I was younger, my mom would say I'd get hurt, and I wouldn't even cry. I just, I just not, tears are very difficult for me to, to have. So I didn't cry at all. I, didn't, I just knelt down, I prayed a prayer. We got up. That night, some of the well-meaning adults came to me, and they said, we believe your buddy really became Christian. He really, he really got saved. We're not sure about you. We're worried about you. And I said, why? And they said, well, you didn't even cry. Now, my buddy went on to become a drug addict and started selling drugs for a while. I went on and became a preacher, started preaching when I was senior in high school. Now, I'm not saying that to be in your face. I'm not saying anything. But why did they think I hadn't repented? The reason they thought I hadn't repented is because they didn't see an outward a feeling. Y'all tracking with me? Can I hear? Right. They, they, they were looking for this. Physical. Listen, you can cry and snort and slobber and still not repent. Still not change your behavior. And you cannot cry, snort, and slobber 
and change your behavior. Are y'all tracking? Can I hear an amen? So, so listen, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, for the kind of sorrow, the kind of grief, the kind of guilt, the kind of pain, emotional pain, that God wants us to experience leads us, say leads us, it leads us away from sin and it results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, watch this, which lacks what? It lacks the turning. It just says, I'm sorry, but it's not changing a behavior. It lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. So be careful when you say, I'm just going to sin and then ask God to forgive me later. Come on, are are y'all tracking with me? That's a dangerous place to be. Worldly sorrow produces tears, but it don't produce repentance. It may have shame. You may have self-pity. You may be embarrassed that you got caught. You may be sorry that you got caught. But listen, it, it doesn't count. It doesn't really matter how guilty you feel if you're not changing. Y'all tracking? Listen, it may. Now, sorrow may lead you to repentance, but you can feel sorry and not repent. Does that make sense? So so repentance in itself. John the Baptist said it this way. He said, prove by the way you live that you've repented of your sins and turned to God. Prove by your lifestyle that you're, it's not, it's not a new equated, repentance is not a new emotion. He said, I don't want you to, I don't know if you're really saved by your emotions. I know if you're really saved by your actions. When sorrow doesn't result in change, you've not repented. Okay, ready? Y'all tracking with me? Everybody with me? So, amen. So it's, it's not, it's, it's more than apologizing. It's more than just feeling guilty. And it's more than a partial surrender. Let's just say that on my wedding day that I told my wife, said, honey, listen, I want you to know something. I'm going to be a faithful husband to you. I'm going to be 95% faithful to you. And what that means, baby, I want you to be aware of that. Out of 100 girls, I'm not going to cheat on you but with five of them. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, am I partially faithful? No. That would be wholly unfaithful. Come on, Right? It would be absurd. That would be, because see, you, uh, listen, watch this. You say, well, I'm honey, I'm going to tell you the truth most of the time. Just occasionally I'm going to tell lies. <laughs> An ounce of lie will pollute a river of truth every time. You either you're either are or you're not. Repentance is not where you say, Jesus, I'm going to let you have certain areas of my life. I'm going to start coming to church. I'm going to start doing it. But you can't have my money. You can't have my habits. You can't have my thing. That's not repentance. If you're deciding who what Jesus is going to control in your life and what he's not, guess who's Lord? It's not him. It's you. If you're deciding what he's going to be Lord over, then he's not really Lord. You're the Lord. Am I, are y'all tracking with me? That's the reason Jesus said it this way. He said, then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must what? Give up your own way and take up your cross daily and follow me. Give up your own way. Other versions say, deny yourself. Notice he didn't say, give up. Sleeping around, drinking too much, doing drugs, doing it. He didn't list things. See, that's what you think Christianity is. You think Christianity is a bunch of rules that you got to list and you got to do. He didn't give you a list. He said, you must deny the center of your decision faculties. You must deny yourself as Lord. And take up your cross. Say, take up your cross. In other words, you've got to forfeit any hold on your life. Every heart, in every one of your heart, and in my heart too, there is a throne and there is a cross. If you are on the throne, Jesus is on the cross. If Jesus is on the throne, your flesh is on the cross. One of the two of those. It's the bottom line. Jesus says, I'm going to be Lord. Let me just tell you, some of you, you remember that bumper sticker they used to ride around with and said, Jesus is my co-pilot. Can I just tell you something? Jesus don't ride shotgun. He drives or he don't ride. There's some of you just want God in your car with you in case you break down so he can tell you where to go so you can feel better so you got somebody to talk to but you're saying you sit there Jesus I'll drive my life and I'll go where I'm going to go and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Let me just tell you something. He ain't even because it ain't even your car. You stole the car. He gave you life. Your life is his. He ain't going to ride around while a joy ride for you on a stolen vehicle, a stolen life. You, he bought you at a price. He paid your ransom. You can't say, he ain't your GPS. 
GPS, you punch in there where you want to go, and if you don't like the route, you go the way, and they just patiently said, I recalculate and recalculate and recalculate it. <laughs> and some of you think Jesus is like that, like, you just sit there, give me enough fire insurance so I don't go to hell when I die, and I'm going to go where I want to go, and he's going to be like, recalculate and recalculate it. <laughs> Listen, he's either Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. <laughs> Bottom line. No partial surrender. You're either all in or you're not. It's the bottom line. You can't, you can't, it, you can't. Here we go. Ready? Repentance is more than apologizing. It's more than feeling guilty. It's more than partial surrender. And watch this. It's not perfection. Isn't that great news? Because let's just keep it real. There ain't nobody in this place wholly surrendered all the time, are they? Any perfect people, raise your hand because we need to help you find another church. Because <laughs> this church is just for imperfect people. And it's all through the Bible. King David, he was his imperfect guy. He, he was an adulterer. He was a murderer. He was a cover-up artist. And yet, even before that, God said he was a man after his own heart. Crazy, isn't it? Even Jesus' disciples deserted him at the end. In fact, Peter, who was one of his closest friends, who walked with him three years, he denied him three times in one evening. And he even became on to become, a, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he became one of the world's greatest preachers, and he preached in Acts. But yet, even after he preached a great message and people got saved, and he was anointed apostle, what you find out in Acts is he struggled with hypocrisy, he was a coward at times, and he had racism. He, was, he had a little prejudice in his heart. And he still was an anointed man of God. That's weird, ain't it? Even after that, you, you could go around. Even the Apostle Paul said he struggled with sin. If repentance meant perfection, we're all in trouble. Those people, King David and Paul and the Apostle, they didn't repent and neither have I. Because my repentance has never, has never been about perfection. I've never got perfect. In fact, let me just tell you, if you want to know what a man looks like who has fallen a hundred times on the same sin, this is what he looks like. So what's the difference? Here's the difference. The godly, say the godly, godly, may trip seven times, but they will get up again. Yeah. That's the difference. That's the difference. A righteous man is not one who never falls, but it's one that when he falls, he gets up and keeps walking towards the Savior. If you saw a man falling seven times, what would you do? You'd think, that man's drunk. You'd, take a pic. you'd feel bad for posting it on Facebook, but you'd do it anyway, wouldn't you? <laughs> Because it would be funny, wouldn't it? It would just be, all right, listen, and God says, you know what? That's a man that's trying. He after my heart. You see, being a Christian don't mean you get perfect. It means you realize you need grace. You say, well, what's the difference then? The difference is the Christian's willing to fight through the struggle. Did y'all hear me? Amen. The difference is a person who's walking out of repentance falls, and they plan to fall again tomorrow, and fall again tomorrow, and fall again tomorrow, they are willing to have, be held accountable. They don't want nobody to know. They're going to keep it a secret. And they're going to not, they just want to live in their sin. A person who's repented is somebody says, I mess up. And when I mess up, I own up. And I need y'all to help me because I can't beat this on my own. Amen. They're not perfect, but they're willing to fight. Say, willing to fight. When those who have surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, it means that their posture is repentance, not rebellion. It, I talked about that last week. Get the message. You go watch on YouTube. It means that they re-embrace the gift of Jesus' righteousness. I talked about that week two of this series. It means that they believe they are promised victory over that stronghold and that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. They believe that every time they fall, they can get back up by the power of Jesus Christ. We continue to follow Jesus when we're willing to struggle in the sin until we get the victory. Amen. Now, let me be clear. I have seen people. I've been in ministry now for 30 years, preaching the gospel for 30 years, and I've watched people. I've watched alcoholics. I've watched people drunk get sober in a prayer and never drink alcohol again. I've seen it. I have watched, I have watched people with tempers, anger issues, lay it in order. I've watched people who are attracted to same-sex homosexuality get saved and walk completely out of that. It complete, I've seen it. I've seen it miraculously. But let me just tell you something. I want you to be, weird, be, be, be clear with this. That is the excep exception, not the rule. Most of the people I've watched become a Christian, they have to fight their demons. They struggle. They're tempted. They take one step forward and two steps back and then three steps forward. And somehow they develop into a powerful Christian doing that. The fact you are struggling with sin is not proof that you have not repented and got a new nature. 
it may be proof that you have repented and have a new nature. Does that make sense? Because before you came to Christ, you didn't even feel guilty about it, did you? And now all of a sudden you feel guilty about it and you're struggling with it. What's the difference? The difference is the Holy Spirit of God inside of you. That's the difference. So the fact you're messing up and you feel guilty and you're struggling through it, it may not mean you had repent. It may mean you are. Repentance is settling the lordship issue. There's no category in the Bible for somebody who says, I just want Jesus to be my Savior, but not my Lord. I'll drive my own car. You won't find that nowhere in the Bible. You've got to say, Lord, you're driving the car. When I take the wheel, I'm sorry. And I have grace. There's a lot of space and grace for the strugglers. Aren't you glad of that? Here we go. Ready? Last thing. I want to just tell you. Repentance is more than apologizing. It's more than feeling guilty. It's more than a, a, a partial surrender. It's not perfection, but it is beginning to follow Jesus. That's what repentance means. Repentance isn't just merely stopping all these bad things. That he, he is starting to do the things he's called the disciples to do. Are y'all tracking with me? If so, say amen. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Say that. Give up your own way. Take up your cross and what? Follow me. Ministry is not just for a special few. It's not like for a special Delta Force or Christian seals or anything else. It built into your salvation... Built into your salvation was this need to minister and to follow after Jesus Christ. He saved you, then sent you. Say it with me. He saved me and then sent me. A little louder. He saved me and then he sent me. A little louder. He saved me and then he sent me. Because why? You are the body of Christ. You are to minister. You are to follow Jesus. You are to do what Jesus would do if he was still on earth. That's what you do. If Jesus would help poor people, you help poor people. If Jesus would tell people, if Jesus would pray with people, if Jesus would help, would, would, would give, then that's what you do. You start following Jesus with your life. You say, I want to be like you. If you say, I don't know what that means, go to Growth Track and we'll help you get involved in the ministry. Go to Growth Track and we'll tell you some of the things you do once you come to Christ to be saved. Are y'all tracking with me? So here's the question for today before I pray for you. Have you repented? Have you? So you may have been listening to this sermon thinking about who, ooh, I wish so and so heard this. No, no, no. Have you repented? Perhaps you've prayed a prayer. Maybe you've walked an aisle. Maybe you've been involved in all kinds of religious activities. But have you repented? And if you've never taken seriously the Lordship of Jesus Christ, your life will never change. That's the bottom line. Now, I've heard it said all my life that many Christians are going to miss heaven over 18 inches. You know what 18 inches? Between the head and the heart. They believe it in their mind. But they never let it get into it. Don't let that be you. Let what you know in your mind captivate your heart. Command your behavior. If you desire in any way right now to make that choice, that is the result of God working in you right now. There's no need for you to wait. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. And Jesus has done everything he possibly can to make the way clear for you. That's what Easter's about. This is Palm Sunday weekend. That's what it's about. Been dying on a cross for you. I'm going to invite the band to come get in place, and I'm going to invite you to look at the seat back in front of you. And everybody get in a posture right now of worship. And there's a communion cup that is there right there in front of you. Would you get that communion cup? And if you, if you would like to have a communion cup, if you don't have one in your seat right now, if you just raise your hand, raise your hand if you need one, and somebody will bring you one. Don't open it or anything. Just get it in your hand and get ready. We're going to get the stage set here for a grand, uh, a grand ending read some scriptures here with you and talk you through it. Now, let me just say this up front. Everybody, everybody got one? Who, anybody need one? Hold your hand up. Good to have you need one. Okay. This is for Christians. Okay. Now, if you're not a Christian, you don't need to do this. 
The Bible says that this is a serious, reverent thing. But if you're not a Christian, why would you walk out of here not being a Christian? So let's just settle that right now. Let's just, God, I'm sorry for my sins. I believe you died for me and rose again in three days. And I commit my life to you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. How many of you say, Dale, I'm praying that prayer. I don't know if I'll be a Christian, but I want to be. Hold your hands up. Good night. I just want to pray with you. I see your hands. Awesome. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Say, Jesus, I'm resting in you right now. And as I take communion here this week, I'm taking communion, receiving you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Just before Jesus died on the cross, he called his disciples into a room. They were eating together. and He went through this that we're getting ready to do as a symbol of what was getting ready to happen. So we, we do this on Palm Sunday, celebrating before Good Friday of what we're going to see. We're gonna, on Sunday, he burst from the grave with resurrection power, but uh, leading up to that was a horrific event. This was just before they arrested him, just before they took him in. Here's what he did. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. On this little cup, there's two layers. There's a clean, a, a clear plastic layer and a foil layer. Pull out the clear plastic layer, and there's a little wafer right on top. I want you to get it out and hold it up to heaven right now. Just hold it up to heaven. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was beaten and broken and bruised for me. The day I do this in remembrance of you, thanking you for your sacrifice on a cross for me. In Jesus' name. Come on, would you eat it with me? Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Could you peel back that? Well, let's pray first. Yes. Father, thank you for your blood that was spilled for us. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Week two of this series, we talked a lot about that. Your blood blots out our sins. And now we've been adopted in your family and have your royal blood in our veins. And we do this in remembrance of you, thanking you for your sacrifice, thanking you for our forgiveness. We do this in remembrance of you, accepting it as your kids and a part of your family. In Jesus' name, would you, would you peel back this foil layer? Would you drink it with me? Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Come on, don't you stand with me, please. Just put that back or put it somewhere and get your hands free. Come on, don't you read this with me. Ready? Come on. The enemy has deceived me long enough. Jesus says. Come on, I didn't hear you. Let's change that you to me. Come on, one, two, three. The enemy has deceived me long enough. Jesus saves. Come on, number two. I am forgiven because Jesus paid for my sins. Come on, number three. I know I am saved because I believe in Jesus with all your might. One, two, three. Today, I choose to follow Jesus. Come on, put your hands together right now. We worship you, Father. Come on, lift your hands to heaven and sing and think about God's reckless love, how he has loved you even though we didn't deserve it. Let's worship God.
me long enough. Jesus saves. The enemy has deceived me long enough. Jesus saves. The enemy has deceived me long enough. Jesus saves. El enemigo se me ha engañado bastante. Jesús salva. The enemy has deceived me long enough. Jesus saves. Satan has deceived me long enough. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. I, I am, am forgiven because Jesus paid for my sins. sins. I, I am forgiven because Jesus paid for my sins. I am forgiven because Jesus paid for my sins. I am forgiven because Jesus paid for my sin. I know I'm saved because I believe in Jesus. I know I am saved because I believe in Jesus. I am forgiven because Jesus paid for my sins. I am forgiven because Jesus paid for my sins. I know I am saved. 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 Because I believe in Jesus. Because I believe in Jesus. In Jesus. Because I believe in Jesus. I know I am saved because I believe in Jesus. Today I choose to follow Jesus. Today I choose to follow Jesus. Today, Today I choose to follow Jesus. Today I I choose to follow Jesus. Jesus. Today I decide to follow Jesus. for watching with us. We hope you heard from God today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and text this number here if you made any commitments to God, need prayer, or if you're ready for your next step. 
We'll see you again next week.